Nice. What up? I am confused as hell what your question, what your thing even is. That world leaders are part of a secret organization behind our back to dumb us down enough in order to kill off billions of people to create a new world order in which the 1% of the world control the rest. So you actually believe that? 100%. Interesting. It doesn't. I know, like, it sounds like a hundred percent crazy. No, yeah, mind. like, I mean, obviously, like, it totally sounds crazy. But like, if you actually like look it up and like do some research, like, just about like the Illuminati and the Freemasons and the Federal Reserve, like, there's almost a point where like you can't even deny it. Because I mean, I got into it initially because my my friend was all about it, and I got into it to kind of disprove him. But the more I started researching, like the more I couldn't really deny. So, I really don't understand how they would complete that mission. You're breaking up hella bad. Oh, I can't even see you. I was gonna say, how do how okay, they do well, that? Okay, well, over the past like 80 years, there have been things implemented into our way of life that we like now assume is normal, but really on the turn of things, it's only harming us. Like if you look at the food in the United States, for instance, there's so much junk food out there that is like just so harmful to our bodies that obesity rates are through the roof. I mean, that's just killing off millions of people just in the U S alone. Like, the chemicals that we're allowing into our food, like most other countries wouldn't even consider allowing it. Also, back in Nazi Germany, Hitler was the first one to experiment with putting fluoride in the water. And what that does, if you ever looked up like what fluoride is or like what it does, it actually, yeah, it's in toothpaste. It's in and it, toothpaste. Like, it, this is my thing. Yeah. Like, if you look on the back of a toothpaste thing, it says, if you swallow a pea-sized amount, contact poison control immediately right well there's enough fluoride in i've not seen you know i got this i got this hold up hold up i'm about to break up my toothpaste right now all right I, you can't, I can't see me see you any no your screen is black all right right here right here it says keep out of reach of children. If more is used in brushing is accidentally swallowed, get medical help or contact poison control center right away. Like that's right on my toothpaste. So like if that is saying that like if you swallow it, then you should contact poison control. Then like you have to look at like how much fluoride is in our water. In in eight ounces of water, there's enough fluoride that it is in the same amount of that toothpaste. So, I mean, if you look up, like, what fluoride does to the mind and the body, it actually, like, kills neurons. So, like, every time you're drinking regular water, you're killing your neurons. Then why the fuck is it No, it's, it's good. Like, it's good for your teeth. Like, if you don't swallow it, if you don't swallow it and you just use it just to, like, brush your teeth and stuff, it's fine. Like, if you wash your mouth out with water, it's fine. But that's such a risk if you're literally doing this to, like, six-month-old children exactly. teaching them how to exactly. brush their teeth. That's why you... It's such a risk to do that, and it's not worth it, because I know for a fact I've swallowed at least a cheap oh, exactly. of toothpaste no, in my like, life. It's like, they say contact poison control on the toothpaste just because like they have to do that for insurance reasons, but it, they also are pumping it into our water just to kill our neurons. Another point is like the vaccines that we give people. A, brain, a newborn baby, like right when they're born, is given a shot for hepatitis. In that shot, there's enough mercury in it to get all that mercury does is they say it's an anti-aging process like so the shot doesn't you know go bad but if you really look up what mercury does like it also kills their neurons in your brain and makes you dumber but we're giving it to our newborn babies and we're giving so much mercury to our newborn babies that it would take a 240 pound male to process that much mercury through the body without any harmful effects but yet we're giving it to newborn babies i've never heard any of this like that's not on my toothpaste go look at your toothpaste 
Go look at your I toothpaste. am a healthcare assistant, and I've not been told about mercury shots and newborn babies. Toothpaste. Like that's all you got to do. And if you like, you can look up the things in the shots. Like it's fine. I don't know about the mercury. All right, you just go look it up. Goodbye, toothpaste. And what? If he talks like, okay, let's look. Read it. It says, in case of intake, consult a dentist. What type of toothpaste are you using? Well, why would you consult a dentist? Like, in case of intake, consult a dentist. Like, obviously, you're not supposed to, in, like, taste it and eat it. Well, I know you're not supposed to swallow it. Like, okay. It's just known that you're not meant to swallow the toothpaste. Right, you know the like, toothpaste. What about like, the Federal Reserve? Do you know anything about the Federal Reserve? Uh, okay, well, like, any money that you want, like, have in your pocket, are you from America? No, I'm from okay. London. Okay, well, in America, our money on the back of it, it says a note from the Federal Reserve, which all that is is, like, America needs money, but we don't have money, so we go to a third party, and we say, hey, we need a billion dollars, and they print a billion dollars worth of money, but that money doesn't mean anything, like, it's paper, and that's what they they use that in the entire world. The entire world is on the petrodollar, and the petrodollar is off of American currency. So, so the, the Federal that, Reserve that, is owned by a family, or like... actually nine families. So nine families own all the money in the world. So like, right. what, what's what's like yeah, like money doesn't mean anything. Like that's the reason we have gone to so many wars. No, I mean, what's your point? Like Iraq tried to get off the petrodollar and go back to the gold standard, and so we invaded them. And the first thing we did when we won, when we got into Iraq is we put them back on the petrodollar just to control them. What's the issue? That, what, it's money. It's paper. It's gold. It's silver. It's copper. It's it's all but, the same. They control interest rates, so they control the market, you like the stock market. If like right now, interest rates in America are at zero for the Federal Reserve. The second like they raise those interest rates to like thirty percent, twenty percent, ten percent, even that we're all screwed. Like we're gonna go into a huge recession. No, not even a recession, a depression. And once that depression hits, every single currency is based on American currency. So we're all just going to go, like the entire world, it, the entire world's economy is just going to go down the drain. You know how many millions of people are going to die from that who are going to lose all the money they have and their pensions and everything? That's going to cause so many deaths right there. Why would the currency revert back to, why would it be comparative to the American currency? Because it's but not the American, American currency, currency. The American they currency is the world currency. But it's no, it's not. not. It's, it's, the, it's the world currency. I like you have the British pound and like everything has that, but every single currency is based off of the American currency for interest rates. If the American dollar falls, other countries are affected too. We are affected by the pound falling, not by the dollar. If the dollar falls, so what do you think would happen? Like if, what do you think would everything. happen if the American stock market crashed? Do you think you guys would be fine over in Brit in Britain? We would. We don't rely on the American stock market entirely. We rely okay. on it just as much as we rely on any other country that would be that size. But it's not comparative to say that you rely on the do American you, stock market because everybody has their car. own, and we are like the second superpower in the world. Okay. Yes. So you buy gas. I buy petrol. Okay, whatever. Petrol. Okay. I like that accent, by the way. I do. The, um, <laughs> the world currency is the petrodollar, which is for buying oil. You can only buy and sell oil on the petrodollar. The petrodollar is American currency. You can only buy and sell oil in American currency. But the issue is I don't. I buy it in English currency, as does everybody else in England. But who buys it in England? Because it's not no, trading. When the your same. country, when Britain buys oil, they buy it 
with American currency? Where would that make sense? Why because would we the, buy it in American currency when our currency is not American? Because the petrodollar is the world currency. This is like this is economics one hundred and one. News like, to me. What grade? Like what grade are you in? You would have to learn this in economics. Okay, well, if you took economics, economics. you would know what the petrodollar is, and you would realize that every country has to buy and sell oil in American currency. So if our currency fails, and nobody has American currency to buy or sell oil, then oil skyrockets, and it it affects every single economy in the world. So Google says a notional unit of currency earned by a country from the export of petroleum. So it is essentially no. every currency. Look up, look up it the, is not, look not up just because it has the word dollar, it's, it's, the it petrodollar. is a dollar. That's what I'm doing right now. The petrodollar is US currency. It says here a notional unit of currency. So America uses the dollar... Canada uses the dollar, Australia uses the dollar, New Zealand uses the dollar, but that doesn't mean that it's all their currency. It's just because it has the word dollar. Exactly. What are you saying? I'm saying it says a notional unit of currency. I didn't take economics. I didn't take maths. Like, I'm a nurse. And this, the notion that just because no, it's a dollar... Doesn't I'm make saying sense U.S. Me. currency. We don't trade in U.S. currency. We trade in our currency. In oil, you trade in U.S. currency. Back in 1946, all the world nations got together and they said that they were all going to put their interest rates in U.S. gold. But then we ran out of gold in Fort Knox. So then instead of letting everybody withdraw their money, France was the first one to try to withdraw their money out of our Federal Reserve which we said, no, that can't happen. So France went into economic declapse, and then we infused the petrodollar, Nixon did, and with the, with the petrodollar, you have to buy and sell currency in U.S. currency to buy and sell oil. It's the whole reason Gaddafi died. So it's the why... whole reason we invaded Iraq. Like, I don't see... I, like, I have Googled it. You are right. I don't understand why that could not, why that is an impact that can be changed How can that very be changed? easily. You just said they had a meeting or whatever yeah. word was you used. That can be done no. again. We don't need to rely on one country just because they are one of no, the biggest. No, I don't know. That could happen if the world leaders wanted it. But after France tried to take out their money from our interest rates, we wouldn't let them. So now it's the petrodollar. And, and people know, like, take Iraq, for instance. Iraq tried back in 2004 to leave the petrodollar and go back to the gold standard, which means they can buy and sell gold with gold. Or, I mean, they can buy and sell oil with gold. So that means they would make billions and billions of dollars because they have so much oil that they're going to sell in gold and they get to keep all that money. But we invaded them. And the first thing we did when we gained Iraq was we switched them back to the petrodollar. What? Where is... I I just don't understand where this comes into world leaders apparently trying to kill people. Okay, I was just bringing up the Federal Reserve just to bring up the Federal Reserve just because it's like, it's a family of nine, nine families that control all the world in the the world. Is it, um... I saw it on Facebook the other day. I can't remember the name of the family. The one that owns all the banks in like all the like six world, yeah. uh, countries. They're the Rothschilds, the Billibergs. What was their name? Rothschilds. Roth- yeah. Rothschild. Yeah. Them. And if you go back and look at like some of the sayings, like I don't know if you know who Ted Turner is. He's the largest yeah. landowner in the in the United States. He has said multiple times on national TV that he believes that the world population should be reduced back down to um, 500,000 people, a uh, population reduction of over 90%. You can, you, know, is, like, you can look that up. Like he's, he said, That's way over 90%. 500,000 people out of Well, this was back in like billion. 2000. 
I don't know what it was back then. It was like six, six billion or something, but you can actually like look that one up. If you're by a computer, like he said that multiple times. He also said that if he could come back as a virus or if he could like be reincarnated, he would come back as a virus to kill off the lower and middle class. But that's not world leaders, though, is it? That's an influential man because of his um, power, his no, money. But whatever, he's one but of that's... the richest people in the United States. He's part, like, he's part of the group. What does he lead? Where is his political? Like, I'm not saying, no, like this, what's going on doesn't have to do with politics. It's. But world leaders does insinuate politics. No, when I said world, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get sworn in. World leaders, I'm talking about like the world's richest people, like the people that control all of the wealth. Right. Like they're bent on because like they believe they truly believe that they're going to do good by killing off this many people they believe that we're starving the um they believe that we're starving the earth right now actually in oklahoma there are i believe it's oklahoma there's a thing called the new world order 10 commandments and the first commandment on it is yeah type that in look up the new world order 10 commandments it's giant huge stone pillars with carved into them commandments and no one knows like who built them or anything but the first commandment on it is keep the world population under 700,000 people, I believe. It's 500, I think it's 500. It's a big number. But like, it's really small relative to how many people we have living in the world. I'm pretty sure that says 500 million. No, it's in the hundred thousands. When it has eight zeros on the end, okay. I'm well, sure. like, even if it is five hundred million, like compared to what it is right now, like do you know how many people they would have to kill off? Yeah. In the in it's the United still... States, like mm-hmm. I like this is kind of a United States problem, but oh, President Obama has signed off on they're called executive orders which means that he doesn't have to go through Congress or Senate to pass these orders. And he says, like, we have a thing called martial law, which says that if, like, any, like, catastrophe goes down in the United States, martial law is declared, which means everybody has a curfew and they're all, everybody's guns get taken away. But he's written a lot of executive orders lately that say if martial law is declared, he has the right to every single person's car. He has the right to every single person's water. He has the right to every single person's homegrown food. He has the right to every single person's guns. He has the right to um, seize uh, people's houses for military purposes. But where is the issue with taking away guns? That's not a bad thing. That is a thing. horrible thing. If no one has guns. No one's able to shoot each other. Okay. Only criminals use guns in a bad way. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. If you want to elite, if you want to make guns illegal, then you should make forks and knives illegal because it's making people obese. People, people, obesity is not the same as murdering people. People have to use the guns in in an inappropriate way to do any harm. If you don't know how to use a gun, then you should not own a gun. I believe that every single person that yeah, exactly. exactly. But the reason for a gun is for okay, self-defense. Me, exactly. But, but you can defend yourself in other ways without okay, having me, to go... Okay, let me bring up this point. Let me bring up this point. Prison. I believe it's Switzerland. I'm not positive, but I believe it's Switzerland. They have the highest gun per citizen ca- ratio per capita. And they have the lowest crime rate. If you know that you have a gun and you know that I have a gun, are we going to have any problems? But they make every single one of their citizens go through gun safety training. Yeah. But the thing is, Switzerland is also one of the most peaceful countries, exactly. at least in the EU. So the issue isn't the gun control. The issue is the way the guns are given. Because they're given properly to people who are trained to use them with background. Which should, should, should 
B. Let me ask you. Um, meth, these meth people is in, in America, power. it's illegal. You can't get it, but people still get meth. If you take away guns, like if you take away guns from everybody, criminals are still going to find a way to get guns. So now you've only taken the guns away from the citizens who abide by the law. You have not taken away the guns from the criminals. It's ex- it's exactly the same here. Meth is illegal. Guns are not illegal, but they're not legal to keep in a household place. And there's no issue. So you just can't keep a gun. You go in into a house. populated place. You just can't keep huh? a gun in a house. Unless you're in a position or a um, job that requires you to do so, it is illegal for you to have that. Okay. But, or you can have things for like hunting yeah, and shit, but there are myself. strict laws that you have I'm to abide by. I'm a huge hunter by. myself, and I use a lot of guns for hunting purposes, but I also have a concealed weapons permit, which means I can conceal a gun anywhere I go. And I know that I feel safer for that because I have been trained since I was a tiny little child how to use a gun properly. I've been taught gun safety and regulations on guns. So in my opinion... I am a law-abiding citizen. I am not going to go shoot anyone unless they hurt, like unless I feel like my life or my family's life is in danger. So if I would absolutely feel uncomfortable to know somebody who is not in a position to need it. I understand you feel comfortable with it, but I would feel incredibly uncomfortable knowing the person that I'm stood next to has a gun okay, in their well, jeans. Or okay, whatever. well, let me ask you this: Say you're at a bank and robbers come in and nobody has guns, and they start shooting people left and right, would you not hope that somebody had a gun on them? No, I would hope that everything went okay. Okay, but nothing's going, and that nobody it's not got going hurt. okay. They're shooting everybody, okay? They got their money, they don't want any witnesses, so they start shooting people left and right. No, because in your, if you're in a situation like that where you are highly traumatized, you will not react in the that correct is- manner. No matter what that is 100% you've had, false. That has been of the time, people do not act that is in the correct manner. False. If you know how to use a gun properly, and how I go to the shooting range maybe seven times a month to learn how to quick quick draw, and what that means is I have my gun in my holster. You have to quick draw it and shoot your target within a matter of seconds. But the use of the fact that you know how to use your gun, fine. But emotional okay, situations, so now everybody in the is dead. that's not going to make it easier for you. You're going to okay. be scared. You're not going to be on the, at the exact point that you think you okay, need to well, be. Well, let's say I, even, I take out my gun and I don't shoot the people, but I just shoot it up in the air. That's at least going to scare them off, okay? But it's better than no one having a gun at all and everybody getting killed. Is but, it though? Because you cannot predict. If somebody is rash enough to go into a bank, steal money, and try and kill everybody, you do not know that they are going to go through with every single thought that you think they're going to do. It was just a hypothetical question. I'm just saying, if you're in that type of scenario, wouldn't you want some way to defend yourself? I would want to stick through it and not antagonize the situation. Not antagonize the situation. So... You're just going to sit there and just, oh, I hope everything goes well. And then boom, 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 boom. Everyone's dead. That is not what I said. said I'm saying if I don't want to antagonize the situation, I'm not going to pull out a gun and shoot things in the air and risk getting targeted myself. No, they're already shooting everyone. You have no chance is what I'm saying. So why would you try and make it worse by pulling the attention to to yourself? Potentially making them make even more rash decisions because they feel threatened. I'm not saying I'm going to make it worse. I, they already made the decision. They got their money and they go, all right. They, the leader goes, all right, kill, kill all the witnesses. That guy starts shooting people. At that point, if I pulled out my gun, my only thought would be I need to kill these guys before they kill anyone else. I have no, I have no will to go shoot anyone. Like I don't want to shoot a single person. But if I feel threatened, if I feel my life is threatened, I will not hesitate. I don't personally understand that way of thinking because if I would pull out a gun, I'd 
be shitting myself. I would because, not be in a right mind Because you've never been trained speaking. with a gun. You've you've never been around guns. But being trained with a gun doesn't mean that your mind has no, been trained it, that's, it, in that's exactly emotionally what you do. thinking. You train your mind to be emotionally ready for that response. I feel I. I that is it. You can train all you want, but being in a natural real life situation actually, doesn't know, mean that you'll know what to do. I know a do. person who has been in that situation where he was driving down the street. He stopped. It was in California in a very, very hostile situ- or very hostile place, and. Four guys tried to come and rob him of his car, and he had to shoot one. He said he felt his life was threatened. He pulled out his gun. He told them, if you do not stop, I will shoot you. They came at him, and he said he shot them. He said he, they had firearms on them, and he shot one because he was prepared for that moment. Living your life thinking about that moment, though. Like- I don't live my life thinking about that moment. My life that would be knowing that I'm safe. That doesn't feel like safety to me, knowing that there's somebody with a gun next to me. That feels much more threatening than knowing well, they do. I, I understand where you're coming from because you've never grown up with guns. You've grown up in a country where people don't have guns. So I understand where you're coming from 100%. All I'm saying is if you grow up in this scenario where you grow up with guns by your side – you're taught that guns are only bad. They're only as bad as the people that use them. I can put my gun right on the table and it's not going to shoot anyone. The moment I make a rash decision, so, oh, I'm going to go kill a bunch of people. Then I'm going to, like, then that's going to happen. People that have guns that are law-abiding citizens are not the problem. It's criminals that want to kill people are the problem. And they will always find a way to get guns. But you say I've lived in a country without being used to guns but i have heard many 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 more opinions on wanting to get rid of guns coming from people who have lived in a country used to having guns around in america that yes. is not true they're like the most of those people are either from new york or california which are the lowest gun carrying per capita states in the united states those people never grew up around guns it's people that don't grow up around guns and knowing how to use them properly that are uncomfortable with them. If you know and were trained to use guns properly, you are perfectly comfortable around them. That shouldn't need to be an issue. Okay. It shouldn't be so In a perfect available. world, nobody needs guns because nobody's going to harm each other. 